Hi, I'm John Williams. Welcome to another accessible adventure in the Pacific Northwest. This time we bring you to where the forest meets the sea, Cape Perpetua Scenic Area in the Sayuslaw National Forest. As we travel along the Pacific Coast Scenic Byway, we'll show you accessible hiking, picnicking, and of course, sightseeing. You may even spot a whale or two. Highway 101, commonly called the Pacific Coast Highway, was designated an All-American Road in 2002, one of only four highways in the state to have this distinctive designation. Cape Perpetua was named by Captain James Cook as he searched for the Northwest Passage on March 7, 1778, St. Perpetua Day. Here at Cape Perpetua Visitor Center, Sayuslaw National Forest volunteers welcome you, provide answers to your questions about the area, and help you get the most of your visit. Inside, enjoy the history of this remarkable area with displays and artifacts. Although springtime is the best time for whale watching, keep your eyes open because whales are seen here year round. Interpreters are on hand daily to share stories, discuss culture of the area's native peoples, as well as the natural history of local plants and animals. Please check with the Visitor Center for details. A short two-mile drive from the Visitor Center is Whispering Spruce Trail. From here, amidst the temperate rainforest of Sitka spruce and hemlock trees, some which started growing about the time Captain Cook visited here, you'll see spectacular views of the coast, there's accessible picnicking, restrooms, and if you're ready, hiking trails. The Whispering Spruce Trail is compacted gravel. I suggest you have a companion along if you're hiking in a wheelchair because the trail is steep and has a few obstacles along the way. But the effort is well worth your while to check out this stone structure built by the CCC in the 1930s. In 1933, a Civilian Conservation Corps camp was built near where the Visitor Center is located today. The CCC constructed Cape Perpetua Campground, a network of trails, and the West Shelter Observation Point, where we're sitting now. During World War II, the Shelter Observation Point was used as a coastal watch station. It was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1989. Now, it's time to head to the sea. A short drive back down and across the scenic highway, we find Devil's Churn. The pioneers who settled here named this spot Devil's Churn. And from this location, you can really understand why they named it that, especially on a windy day like today. Here at Devil's Churn, you'll find paved trails, like the half-mile loop called Trail of the Restless Waters. The trail is very accessible for wheelchairs, for people with other mobility aids, and for our vision-impaired friends. But beware, steep inclines make the hike difficult in a manual wheelchair. Viewpoints like this will get you up close to the ocean. Down these stairs to the beaches below, you'll find tide pools teeming with wildlife. Native peoples hunted the beaches for clams and other sea life here. I recommend when you get to the head of these stairs, return the way you came. The loop continues, but it's steep and narrow, and it's not very wheelchair friendly. Devil's Churn includes a snack bar, accessible restrooms, accessible parking in the upper and lower lots, and incredible views. As you leave Devil's Churn and continue south on the Pacific Coast Highway, the next turnout is Cook's Chasm. Here, you'll see how bridge builders span the chasms and coves along the scenic byway. Take a short, accessible hike on Captain Cook Trail. Now the trail puts on quite a show as waves crash into the rocks and crevices at a place called the Spouting Horn. Please check the Sayuslaw National Forest website for more information. Thanks for watching. I'm John Williams and I'll see you soon for another accessible adventure in the Pacific Northwest.